Hello, everyone, and welcome to Content Marketing Insider, powered by Repurpose.io. I'm Roy Garcia, and if you are into short-form videos, then this is the episode for you. Our guest for this episode is a TikTok marketing and trends expert who's featured in places like Business Insider, The Guardian, Yahoo News, and Yahoo Finance, and Bloomberg. She also helps out businesses to help make them grow and make more impact through the power of short-form video content. Her name, well, it's a little bit wild. Well, honestly, <laughs> her name is Wave Wild. Wave, welcome to Content Marketing Insider. Hello, thank you so much for having me. I'm super excited to chat today. When I got the news that she's going to be in the podcast and I found out her name, I said, wow, that is a very unique name. Wave Wild. It's also exciting that she's part of marketing. That's talk about a pitch, right? Like, really? Marketing Wave uh-huh. Wild? It's a good so marketing name, yeah. It is a good marketing <laughs> name. You're right about that. The topic that we have today, folks, is this. Cracking the code to short form video success. And Wave is going to be bringing us through a tunnel of amazing content and amazing tips to get cracking the code. Okay. But before the topic, I am very much interested to know more about not just the name, but the person behind the name. So, Wave, can you tell us more? about yourself? Yeah, so I am primarily known for as being a TikTok marketing expert and trends expert, uh, but really everything I teach and I share with clients and students is applicable. It works for all of short form video formats. So that's reels and shorts as well. And I help business owners to amplify short form video so more people hear their message, they can generate more leads, make more money in their business. And I think that's one of those things that a lot of potential clients want to happen is more leads generate, more mm-hmm. leads generate, more cash and grow their business. Three things that even myself, exactly. I would like to have. Yeah. So, uh, and she's been doing that and uh, she's been featured in, in many kinds of media and, and it's such an honor that she can be here. Such a pleasure actually Thank you. that you can be here today. So wave, let's, let's start riding the wave, shall we? And let's start talking about our topic today, cracking the code to short form video success. There are three points that we want to give all our listeners. First point, three best practices for short form video. You, you may be right now, for those that are listening, you may be doing TikTok or you may be thinking of starting in it and you don't know where to start. So Wave is going to share to you three practices that would be best for your current short form video. And I'm excited to hear about that. Tell us about that wave. Yeah, well, there are a lot of best practices, but we're gonna share my top three today. So the first one that we're getting into is what we call the hook. We've probably all heard of video hooks, but these are essential. They are the number one way to get more views on your videos. And we all want more views because more views equals more visibility, the more visibility we get, the more chance that we can build an audience or or build a business. So you have to use these hooks. Now, I define a hook as something that you say or that you do in the first three to five seconds. I used to say just three seconds, but I'm actually a really big fan of the longer hooks, like the five second hooks, because if you can get people to watch that five seconds, you're just getting more watch time. They're so important because you need to get people to stop scrolling and actually watch your video. Now, there's a lot of different types and ways that you can do video hooks, but the most common type of hook is what I call a title hook. And I compare it to the title of a YouTube video. So, you know, when you go to YouTube and you search for something and you see all these listings come up, that there is a title there. And that title, the whole purpose of that is to get attention and give people an idea of what the video is about. So title hooks, very, very common for educational types of content, maybe even inspirational content or telling stories, but they are the most common type of hook that you see across all short form video platforms. So here's an example of that. My title hook could be uh, TikTok mistakes you're making in your bio. 
So using that word mistake, it's getting people curious, like, what is she talking about? I don't want to be making a mistake. I should probably listen to this if I'm interested in improving my bio on TikTok. So you know exactly what that video is going to be about. Now, I do want to share a strategy, a strategy that I have seen is really, really helping creators go viral across TikTok. I see it a lot on shorts as well. And this is what I call a double hook strategy. Now, this is when you're gonna use, yes, you're gonna use two hooks. This is so common. I'm seeing it all over my FYP. I've done some trainings about this in my community, but these double hooks. So essentially what you're going to do is take that title hook and you put it in text in your video at the top. Now, when I was teaching title hooks, I would always recommend to my students, okay, when you have a title hook, you wanna have it in text on screen, and you also want to verbally say it at the beginning of your video because it gives more impact, helps people to stop the scroll. They, they hear you say it and they see and they read the text as well. However, it's changed a little bit now and the trend is kind of going more to this double hook strategy. So that's when I have my original title hook in text on screen. And then I'm also verbally saying another hook. So a second hook, but, and it's showing up in captions. I highly recommend you put it in captions. So here's an example of that. I could have in text as a talking head video, above my head, there's gonna be text on screen that says TikTok mistakes you're making in your bio. Then what I'm actually, I'm not gonna repeat that in words. What I'm gonna say is, if you wanna convert your profile views to more followers, you need to do this. So they're, they're seeing what the video is about, but they're also hearing me say it's like another hook that's really making even more impact and making them be like, okay, what is she talking about? I really need to know, right? So it's, it's, it's having that double impact. So very popular strategy working uh, on short form right now. I think that really generates a lot of curiosity. I mean, and it's, it's mm -hmm. not just audible, but also you're looking at visually. And uh, you're right, we, we live in a three to five second world and people are getting your attention. So just to see that, and then you take the time to read it and then start listening to it. It's going to be very effective. And I think if they master something like this, it's going to really help them mm. get people to do that, right? Definitely give it a try. And I, th I like that wave. I like that because you're typically hooks. Yeah, the, the idea is to get them reeled in, pun intended, mm -hmm. reeled in to your videos. But I think the double hook gives you the opportunity to say what you can say in the short amount of time that you're given, yeah, three to five seconds. So I think I love that idea. I'm going to try that out too. Um, and I, I'm sure you'd try that too. And those people are uh, watching and listening to this, be sure to do that. So that's three practices. Let me just say this. We're just in the point 1.1 1 .1 of, oh our, of our <laughs> talk. And that's already value. So good night, everybody. Bye-bye. No, that's it. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Are you overwhelmed in creating content? Maybe you're stuck and you don't know where to start. Well, we've got your back. Repurpose.io is giving away a free content creation guide. Yes, for free. All you need to do is go to repurpose.io slash guide and download it for free. Start creating content right now with a free repurpose.io content creation guide. Download the guide for free from your friends here at repurpose.io. Okay, 1.2, we're gonna go to we're gonna go to the second practice. Yeah, so the second best practice is to use text on screen. Please, please, please do this. It it drives me nuts when I see creators in a talking head style of a video and there's no text on screen. Now there's a few reasons why this is so beneficial and important. The first one is that it helps with viewer retention. We know how important it is to get lots of watch time, as much watch time as possible on your videos. That is like the number one factor in your video performance. You need as much watch time as possible. So when you add text to the screen, and this is really important for educational videos, people are hearing you speak and they're also reading and they're following along. So that's helping with that viewer retention. It's also helping them to learn, right? We know that there's various different learning styles and I know that I will absorb more information when I'm reading it and hearing someone say it at the same time. 
So really, really important for that. The other reasons are because, well, it's also shows include to anyone who is hearing impaired. And of course, there are actually a lot of people watching short form video with the sound off. I know people might not believe that on TikTok, but I especially like even on my own feed, I don't even see a lot of videos with music anymore. A lot of them are talking videos. People are right. sharing information. And I know I've heard my followers say, yeah, I'm in bed in the middle of the night watching TikToks on silent because my partner's sleeping beside me. So yes, people are watching with the sound off. So please use the captions. There is an auto caption feature on TikTok makes it super easy to add captions or you can add text manually or you can even add captions in other platforms. There's so many ways to do it, but absolutely you have to do it best practice. Well, I can attest to that because people do sleep. And sometimes, and I think it's a, a bad habit. Sometimes that when you're trying to sleep, you're you're looking at TikToks and next thing you know, it's three hours later, right? But wow. for those people who you're beside with or anyone, yeah. Uh, and I think it's not just about sleeping. It's also when you're commuting and you don't want to disturb the people around mm -hmm. you. If there is a message you want to tell them, sometimes we're talking about Audible and and music and all that. But yeah, I've seen a lot of these videos with text captions. Before, maybe it's not that important. But now, specifically now, we live in a very noisy world and sometimes we just want to turn that off. So yeah, yeah. you want to take, take care of that. And I don't always have my headphones with me or my AirPods or whatever. I usually don't have those with me. So yeah, definitely a really, really good practice. Right. I think, I think before, the reason why we don't really put a lot of emphasis on captions is because it's very tiresome, very cumbersome to create these so captions. it's so easy now. It is so easy. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, it's so easy now. Just press one of boop and try to check if the spelling is correct. And then next thing, it's right there. Go ahead. Another, okay, another benefit just came to top of mind for that is that it really does help with SEO, search engine optimization, specifically on TikTok. I'm not sure on shorts how much it helps or reels, but definitely it is the algorithm is picking that up, picking up that information. I think also that when, when, we do these things and I know like Wave is a TikTok marketing expert. That's her niche. She's focusing on that. But as we go along with all these other platforms trying to also adapt to the trend, which is short forms, you want to start creating content that can adapt to every single one of them. Anyway, whether it's TikTok or shorts or reels, more or less they have the same feel to it. Right, There may be certain songs that are available that are trending in one and they're not on this one. But most likely, you want to create content that can be applicable to TikTok, that can be applicable to Reels, that can be mm -hmm. applicable to Shorts, simply because you want to make sure that your content is out there and you're not repeating yourself, oh, okay, I'm going to do this for TikTok only and all of that because time is very important. So yeah, so go ahead, use the captions. And that's going to help you out in the long term. So that's just 1.2 of uh, point number one. Are you tired of constantly churning out new content? Do you want to reach a wider audience and increase engagement without spending hours in creating new content? Look no further than Repurpose.io, the ultimate tool for content repurposing. With Repurpose.io, you can easily turn your existing content to new content like videos, podcasts, social media posts, and more. You'll save time, reduce stress, and reach a wider audience. And we're offering a free 14-day trial of Repurpose.io just for you. This is the perfect opportunity to test it out and see the results for yourself. You'll have access to all the full features of Repurpose.io for 14 days. Just visit Repurpose.io slash free. Again, Repurpose.io slash free. Don't miss out on the chance to revolutionize the way you repurpose your content. Try it today. So we've got the third one, third best practice for short form video. And that is, drum roll please. Yes, that one is all about telling story. Now, this is so, so important. If you want to go viral, you want to get more views, 
this is a really great way to do it is to master the art of storytelling. And it's actually not very complicated. I come across so many students and clients who are like, oh, I don't know how to do that. They want some sort of frameworks, but here's what I can tell you now. You, you don't have to get hung up on thinking about like, and, or trying to figure out like, what is the hero's journey? What is the start, the middle and the end or, or any of that stuff. You don't even have to follow those typical formats of traditional storytelling because what's really, really popular on TikTok and, and short form video right now is this talking head style where you recount an experience. So that might be a video, I've seen a lot of these, where a woman is just speaking to the camera, talking about the experience that she just had with her doctor today. Or talking about, uh, I'm thinking of another viral video where a girl's sitting in her car just talking about her experience of ordering the drink at Starbucks and what happened and how she didn't, she kept asking for what she wanted, but she kept not getting what she wanted, right? So this is, they're just recounting, retelling a story, uh, an experience that they just had. And I think why this works so well is that it really gets people to relate and share their own experience. And you see this in the comments, people are giving their opinion and how they've had a similar experience telling their stories. So it's not that complicated. It is great if there is some sort of punchline at the end, like something happens that was unexpected, but it doesn't have to. It doesn't have to follow that format. So it does not need to be dramatic. You might also want to think, if you want to be more strategic about this, you might want to think about what emotions kind of do you want to play into or how is this relatable? And if you're a business, you think about maybe incorporating some client stories where you can kind of seed in your offer into a story where you can kind of drop like how this is how you help this client and this is how you work with them through story. So you can keep it pretty simple to start talking head format. If you're sitting in your car, wherever you are, and uh, try one of these uh, stories where you share an experience that you recently had. Now, when, when it comes to this method, I think there's a lot of benefit to it. I guess, first of all, everybody more or less can do it. I mean, we go mm -hmm. to our coffee and have drinks with people and start having conversations so we tell stories. I guess the challenging part is making sure that everything fits within 60 seconds, right? You don't want to go over yes. that. But when does a story become a rant? Because we do want to make sure that, that the story has a point. Because I've seen also a lot of TikTok videos are just really just people ranting. So for those who are listening today, I know that you don't just want to rant. You want to make sure that there's a point to it. So what would you tell our listeners about that wave that they don't make their video like a rant, but with a I point? I think you have to be careful. I would class, like I classify a rant as a different style, another video format that you can do. Rants are very popular. But they're, I don't necessarily think that they tell stories. They're usually just kind of angry or complaining or, or bringing attention to something. So if you, you do want to be careful in a story, that's why I recommend trying to recount the experience, right? Because then you're not going to get into the ranting part too much. The other thing you could do is try like scripting out your story a little bit before you make your video, whether that's just bullet points to kind of help you kind of be like, this is what I want to touch upon in the story so that it, it doesn't turn into a rant. And I think it's it's important that those who are wanting to do this method must consider that there's always a point to the story. There's a goal. Mm -hmm. It only becomes a rant when it's you're just saying stuff for the sake of saying it. But there is a point. So I think when you tell a story, there will always be like either a moral or something you've learned or, hey, this is this is the point. Because I guess people will can can discern somehow when it's a rant, right? Yes, um, yeah, for sure. So yeah, so I guess yeah, and 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 Wave is saying that you tell a story, make sure there's a point to that. Maybe you can even ask people like, can you do you relate to to this story? Have you learned about it? Put it on the comments below, something like that. But again, it's it's telling your story now. It, you need you may need to do some practice with this, especially if you're squeezing it for sixty seconds. But I yes, think that's you have great. to be mindful of the time, and that right. maybe in that scripting process that would help you. Correct me if I'm wrong, way, but it does improve in time, like wine. 
Uh, the more you do this, right? Because mm-hmm. a lot of people might be like, I don't know how to do this right now. I might fumble a lot. So what would you tell someone who's, who's doing that? That's absolutely okay. And actually the authenticity that's going to come through that will be very beneficial for you because people can pick up when something is, is more scripted or not, not authentic or rehearsed. So that's okay. You know what? And over time, practice and you're going to get more confident with speaking on camera and telling the story. Yes. Confidence is built with mm-hmm. practice. Practice, practice, practice. I think it was who, who said that. But whoever said that, thank you so much for saying that. <laughs> yeah. So storytelling. So again, three best practices. Number one is your text headline. And then you're yep. going to use Using the hooks. Uh, yeah, the double hook, right? So you have a text headline hook on the top. And then you're going to do another hook that is related to your text headline hook. So it's a one-two punch. Mm -hmm. Number two is using your captions. And it's very easy now. You can use third-party software or you can use the built-in software for that channel, whether it's TikTok or whatever. Mm -hmm. And number three is storytelling. Make sure that when you use up the 60 seconds of time that there's a point and it's not just a rant, right? Something that we can learn from you. All right. So, oh my goodness. That is already a lot. (laughs) Great, great, great content. That's that's it. Talk about being mind blown. A lot of content and information and knowledge. Who? In just one episode. That's why we're doing a part two. Again, thank you for joining us. This is Roy Garcia. And we'll see you again in part two of this episode. Bye for now.